So I'm going to talk to you about autonomous driving technology and how over the course of the next 30 years, by about the year 2050, we will reduce the number of car-related deaths on our roads from over 1.2 million to zero, simply by removing the driver from the car. So we're on the verge of one of the biggest changes in society through technology that we've ever seen before, possibly even bigger than the internet itself. Picture this. Think about the most important person in your life, your mother, your father, your husband or your wife, the person with the best-looking messentry you've ever seen. <laughs> and they're at a pedestrian crossing, about to cross the road, and there's a car traveling towards a pedestrian crossing at about 80 kilometers an hour. It takes about 10 seconds for the car to reach a pedestrian crossing, and the person that you love just received a text message as they're crossing the road. It takes about 10 seconds for the text message to be read and received while the car is still approaching your loved one and it gets there in the next few seconds. What would you like? Who would you like to be driving the car? A person that might be checking a message or a computer? Which you think is more likely not to hit your loved one? Which would you choose? So the future is very, very clear. By 2050, a mere less than 40 years away, most of the cars in the world won't have steering wheels. They'll be driving themselves, and while they don't look too great at the moment, this is Google's Waymo car, they will get a lot better looking. They will be comfort zones. If you look currently, there's 1.2 million cars, electric cars, in production. And the number is doubling year on year. Every traditional manufacturer is racing to get into electric vehicle production. And electric vehicles and autonomous cars come hand in hand. By 2040, conservatively, according to Bloomberg, there'll be half a million of these cars on the road. That's more than half of the population of cars in the world of about one billion, and that number grows. And what is an autonomous vehicle, or vehicle as it's called in Westmead? Um, it's pretty much a giant battery, as you can see, uh, and that battery is getting better and better. Right now, a battery on a single charge will take the car between 500 and 1,000 kilometers on one charge. That battery is connected to one, two, or three powerful industrial electric motors that carry the car faster than an internal combustion car could ever do. And that electric motor is powered by a piece of software called usually a neural network, a software brain. And that software brain is trained by a machine learning algorithm. And that machine learning algorithm is fed millions and millions of miles of driving video that's consumed by test drives on open roads. And the thing about a neural network is it learns the same way your brain does, through trial and error. It knows the difference between good and bad. The big difference about these cars is that they have better reaction times than you have, by far. They can see further than you can see, by far. They can see at night. They can see all around them. They have a 360-degree field of vision, and they can see around corners when they come up to an intersection. They see in all directions more than 300 times a second and decide what to do 300 times a second. They can see in front of the car in front of you and if that car does something stupid, they can take evasive action before you can even see the car. And that's to the benefit of radar and LIDAR, because of radar and LIDAR, I should say. They'll never lose their concentration. They'll never fall asleep at the wheel. And they certainly will never send a text message or check their email while they're driving. And I won't ask for a show of hands on that one. And of course, despite their big brains, they're starting to get quite beautiful looking. And in the future, there'll be many different ways that people will experience these cars, but they'll become places to be rather than places to take you somewhere. Your children will never have driver's licenses if they're under five years old now. They'll never need to drive a car. They'll spend their time in these vehicles, socializing through vehicle rather than socializing through screens, Instagram, and Facebook. Although they may do that while they're in the vehicle, still not talking to each other. It'll be a far safer place for them to be, and there will be human contact, maybe too much, in the future. <laughs> and for some, there will be homes. Think about the homeless, and in this context,
governments or cities could provide these cars as actual safe homes for people to live in. So it sounds a bit far-fetched, right? But currently, my car and many other people's cars can drive without any assistance on their own down the M50. It's a 20, 30, 40 mile drive, depending on where you live. But my car takes me all the way down the M50 without me steering, without me braking, or without me accelerating. I'd like to say I don't check my email when I'm doing that, but I do. And I feel safe. Probably against the law. We might have to edit the video a little bit, but it's very, very safe. And while it's not fully autonomous, and this is, uh, in about three years, a little more, a little less, depending on who you talk to, Tesla, Alphabet's Waymo, Uber, a number of other companies will be ready with the software for autonomous driving. These cars are already out on the roads, mostly in California, granted, but they're there. Google's Waymo car can drive 5,000 miles on average, uninterrupted. 5,000 miles, the driver could have their eyes closed, the car does absolutely everything. Uh, safely and securely. Average speeds are quite low, but they're safe speeds. Think about, think about the possibilities with these. Wide-scale adoption, by the way, will be within 10 years. And what's wide-scale adoption mean? Companies like Uber, Lyft, MyTaxi, big invested companies, highly capitalized companies, have stated quite categorically that 100% of their rides within 10 years will be driverless. And in fact, their business models don't work unless they can remove the driver from the car and the cost of that driver. Insurance, safety, everything that goes around personal mobility or transportation as a service comes down by a factor of 10 when you introduce autonomous technology, remove the wheel from the car. And these cars, they don't need traffic lights. They don't need stop signs. They don't need car parks. They don't need garages. They're just different. They use the roads far more efficiently than you will ever be able to use the roads. When an autonomous car is put in a circle or in traffic, it keeps perfect pace. So it never gets too close to the car in front of it, and it never gets too far away from the car in front of it. And the result, only one car, autonomous car, in traffic completely removes the start and stop patterns that we all love going down the N11. You can see it playing out here, goes away. Think about variable speed limits that are implemented in some European cities, particularly London, done with a goal to reduce traffic congestion. This is automated through autonomous, car, autonomous cars, and actually this technology is already in many cars that are on the road today. So these cars are just way, way, way more efficient and better at using infrastructure than our, us humans can ever be. And they learn all the time. Every mile they drive feeds them. Every unusual situation they encounter improves the neural network either automatically or through exception handling through the, the people riding the software. But again, as complicated as all these scenarios look, neural networks learn quickly. And actually, driving a car is quite a simple task to make happen automatically. The problem is safety. So until these cars get to close to 100% exception-free riding, there will be cases where even the neural network can predict. The Irish heifer eludes technology today. <laughs> so there's a confluence of technology which is enabling this to become a reality. Firstly, the power of processors with things like TensorFlow, machine learning, neural network, the evolution of that technology and the cost of running it makes it possible to have a supercomputer in the boot of your car. That's the first thing. Production costs of lithium-ion batteries, which are usually the batteries that are in these cars, has come down by a factor of 10. We can now produce a battery for less than $200 per kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour takes a car between 5 and 10 kilometers on the road. So a big car, a big saloon car that will take a whole family, can go for 500 to 1,000 kilometers for less than $20,000 battery cost. And that number keeps coming down. Energy density, or the amount of energy that we can cram into a tiny little battery, is also increasing. That's the line that you see going north. That makes the batteries smaller. So for small cars, we can get the same range by packing more energy into one space. 
and this is powering a complete revolution. By next year, estimates are that it will be cheaper to produce an electric car than it will an internal combustion engine car. And an electric car has about a tenth of the moving parts of an ICE car, an internal combustion engine car. So that means that the average lifetime of one of these electric autonomous cars would be about a million kilometers. It's already over half a million kilometers, already far more than a normal car. So the capital cost of ownership of a car is a fraction of what it is for a traditional ICE car. Half of global oil production goes into making petrol or gasoline. AV cars, electric cars, will be charged with sustainable energy sources wind, all sorts of a sustainable energy sources, but primarily wind because it's stronger at night for us Irish. What happens oil prices? What happens geopolitical relationships or foreign Middle Eastern economies perhaps when global demand for oil halves? And we're talking about 2050 when that will happen. Use of petrol would become a niche product for us lunatics that still like to drive. So there's two revolutions going on right now. There's the shift to electric cars and there's the autonomous network revolution. Those two are working together to completely change the way we think. Now I'm going to take you about 30, 35 years forward to the year 2050. I'm going to tell you about what life might be like in the autonomous car world. So that's the timeline, but think about the morning you wake up 7.30 or, or 9 a.m., time I usually wake up, your car detects that you're out of bed and starts to make its way towards your house. The car lives four kilometers away in a shared car park where its energy is used for the grid. Cars no longer stay at home in 2050. They don't need to because they can come to you when you need them. So your, car, your, your house doesn't have a garage. It doesn't have on-street parking. It doesn't have a driveway. That space can be used for something else or we can have more houses in the same amount of space. So the car was given a network route by the city uh, network planning, by the, by the street planning. The car was given a route to your office that takes 17 and a half minutes. And it knows that it's going to be seven and a half, 17 and a half minutes to the second. And the reason it knows that is because there's no traffic lights, there's no stop signs, and there's no traffic jams. So you can predict exactly when you're going to get to work. So you hop in the car. The car, by the way, brought you your coffee and your donut from the autonomous drive through at Insomnia on the way to get you. So there's no coffee break required. You get to work on time, off you go, in to do your job, and the car goes back to your house to pick up your two children. Think about that for anyone that has young children. How would you feel about your children hopping into a car with no driver? How would you feel about that car bringing your child to school? And that's the way it's going to be in 2050. So the car drops your kids to school, you get a video notification that your kids are securely there, everybody's happy. You didn't spend you know, half an hour or an hour every day in the school run. Then the car heads off to pick up your dry cleaning, the dry cleaning that it dropped off to the dry cleaning shop the day before. And then it goes to the bookshop where you had ordered on Amazon the night before and you checked on the checkout page that you wanted self-autonomous pickup. So that's a zero cost option, your car goes up and picks that up for you. We used to use drone delivery in 2050 with Amazon, but it got too expensive because all of the hijackings in Tala. <laughs> the car spends a couple of hours on the road, then it's got lots of energy in it, so it goes do some meals on wheels. It goes around to local restaurants, picking up delicious meals and dropping them to the houses of the elderly. You've chosen, you've chosen to use your car for charitable purposes during the day when it would otherwise be sitting doing nothing. Then at four o'clock, it goes back picks the kids up at school and brings them home, just in time to head back to the office to get you. You get into the car and you've got a full widescreen there, you've got your office in the car really for the 20 minutes it takes to get home. You're doing your email and you notice on the left hand side there's a car with a guy on a rowing machine in it. He's the 2050 equivalent of the middle-aged man in spandex on a bicycle on his way home. But he's fit and the car is stinky as hell. Then. The car drops you home and it goes back to the four kilometers away shared parking area where it becomes part of the electric grid. So when everyone switches on their kettles at 8 p.m. in the middle of X Factor and drives the grid to its peak, 
the car network will be used to power those peaks. So the electricity grid will be far more efficient. In fact, the typical car with a 50 or 100 kilowatt battery will be able to power five to 10 homes in its entirety during peak usage. So think about the, that stored energy and the effect that that will have on the electric grid. And then it stays there at night, charging in the middle of the night when power is virtually free because of utilization on the grid. And what about security and privacy? Even the cars that are out today, the autonomous, or, or the self-driving cars, should I say, have on average eight cameras each, digital cameras each. And these cars are always on. There is no ignition switch that makes these cars come alive. They're always on, and their cameras can be always recording. With 5G networks, that video feed will be available permanently. So think about committing a crime in 2050. How could you perpetrate a crime when there's millions, if not billions, of digital witnesses on every street corner, potentially recording everything you do. And with machine learning, police forces could simply upload an image of you, or a behavioral pattern of you, or a signature of you, and check with the car network where you currently are, or your whereabouts for the last 24 hours, 72 hours, and so on. It's a little scary, but right now, there's cameras, government control cameras, all over our streets. So with a car network that's there all the time, what happens policing? It's like neighborhood watch on steroids. So there's a confluence of innovation that's going on right now. Computing speed, machine learning practice, sensor technology and cost, battery production costs, that's actually making a fully autonomous network a reality. We're literally two to five years away from a, from a very, very speedy rollout of self-driving cars. We're 30 years away from saving a million lives or more on the roads in the world. And the technology exists today to make this happen. It's just about adoption and rollout. Since I walked onto this carpet, 11 minutes ago, about 30 people will have died on roads around the world. The odds of one of them in Ireland, about one in 300, that someone died in the last 11 minutes. But by tonight, and particularly after midnight, it's about a 50-50 bet that somebody in Ireland died because of a road-related death, most likely through human factors. And I really hope it's not somebody that you know. So. Let's welcome the autonomous future and say goodbye to the steering wheel forever. Thank you.